Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Now come on in. Now come. Sorry, y'all. Y'all know I'm weird. Whatever. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Hey, everybody. What's up? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. Okay, follow me on Instagram. And let's get into the video. Right? Hey, 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 people. Hold up. Hey, hey. Hey, hold up. Sound, sound, sounds funny. What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? What's going on with the sound? La, 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 la. Hey, everybody. I hope you're, oh, I think that might be my earring. Girl, I hope that's my earring. Anyway, what's going on, people? Hi. How you doing? How you doing, everybody? What's going on? It's your girl, Bondi Blue. I'm back. Okay. And I know it's a Saturday. I know it's the weekend. And I don't normally be up here with y'all on the weekends. But girl, y'all know I took a lot of time off. So we trying to <laughs> we trying to uh make up for what was missed, girl. Um, and plus they got so much stuff going on. Like I can't even put my phone down without something going on. Hold up, y'all. This is aggravating me. Give me a second. Okay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Someone please call 911. Okay, listen. Um, where do I want to start? Because it's so much stuff going on. Girl, it's so much stuff going on. Um, okay, disappointments, y'all. Disappointments in life is finding out that Brandon T. Jackson is one of those incel black men. He's a passport bro, I believe. He's just said a lot of corny shit on the internet and now that he's finally starting to receive attention for all of the corny shit he says on the internet now he's a little upset he, he's a little upset he wanted to make jokes about cassie you know he wanted to be funny you know what i mean he was like you know oh i'm gonna get up here and talk about a relationship that i had from 10 years ago you know i had to say i had sex with a lot of women 10 years ago like I'm really going to need for everybody to understand that things don't happen when you want them to happen. Things happen in time. People have to get perspective. They have to get clear <laughs> on what they need to do. They don't always know. Y'all are always like, you knew, you knew what you, girl, 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 sir, sir. Okay. I just, <laughs> boo, boo to him. Hold up. I can't, I can't hear, I can't hear the boo. Now we're going to have that. I put it in the wrong hole. <laughs> My bad. Hold up. I hope y'all heard the boo. Ugh. 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 Try it again. No, we're not hearing it. God damn it. Oh, wait. Okay, no. We're good now. <laughs> oh, okay. L let's hear. Hold up. Are we hearing it? Hold up. No, we're not hearing it. Hold up. Oh, love y'all. I'm sorry. Y'all know when I do the uh, Ooh Lady First channel, it's different, um, different settings. And I change things around and things get weird. Now I can't hear what, what, what the little munchkin is saying. Ugh. Why can't I hear what the little munchkin is saying? Ugh. Y'all, it doesn't even matter. Um, I do feel like he's a fucking weirdo either way. Hold up, y'all. Just give me one second. I want to see why this is acting ignorant with me today. I ate some, uh, like, I ate pork, like, maybe, like, whoo, like, 10 years ago. Um, I, I had sex with, like, a lot of women. Um, <clears throat> she choked me first, so I had to. Uh, I'm so happy I'm not that famous no more because, uh, this, yeah. You, you were, you were never that famous. You, you, I'm so, you were never, you were never that famous. <laughs> uh, nigga. Then I, I owe, uh, I just paid my, off my taxes. Um, I was late on my child support a couple, uh, weeks ago. Um, what, what's with all the, what, what's with all this? What, what, what's, 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 why is it red? What's with all this? What, what's what, what's with all that? Figure that out. Yeah, it's just crazy out here, man. Just yeah, it's crazy. Okay, now Cassie is coming out. 
So this is the tell all generation. I'm about to just, I'm about to confess all my sins. Like at this point, like I just, like y'all. Uh, what are you on right now, sir? He's one of them, them they say he's a, he, he is a Hebrew Israelite. Is that what they say? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Cassie is I don't coming know. out. But what I do know is he's a weirdo to me. He's a weirdo to me now. It's above me at this point. Hold up. Let me see if I could find I could find a response. Because it was all, it was all, you know, it was just a joke. You know? <laughs> I love you. Oh, it was just a joke, ass niggas. Okay? We've already determined that when y'all say it's a joke, y'all really are serious. And y'all trying to mentally manipulate the girl so that they won't take the terrible things you say to them seriously. You will have gotten that negative shit out your mouth, off your chest, and into her face. But she's supposed to act like you're not serious. She's supposed to act like her feelings aren't hurt already. She's supposed to act like the disrespect was all for play play. And I just feel like... Thirty second generation that don't pay attention to context of jokes. If anybody knows anything about comedic satire, I come from long form content. Sir, you are not about to old nigga us. Those jokes, D. L. Hughley, my fucking fave. So disappointingly, so David Allen Greer. Y'all are miserable old men. Now you got a miserable young old nigga. And when y'all get online, y'all so-called comedy comes off like you are making jokes from a place that's way up and through here where you hate women. You really don't like these bitches, but you gotta fuck them. You gotta be around them. So you get off all your little frustration in your little, your little jokes that nobody finds funny except for you and the niggas like you. But please don't don't describe your your short lived movie career as long form content, nigga. Uh, who are you talking to? About comedic satires. No way would I ever make fun of Cassie's trauma or Diddy or whatever's going on. I was talking about myself. I was self joking about myself. So that's what it was for the for number two for all the people in the hood. And the people that, that want to say things that's calling me different names, saying I'm working. First of all, I chose not to work for seven years. I came back, did a big contract with Paramount, BT, Tubi, uh, name it, um, um, Netflix, which you should see. I got movies coming soon. Can't promote them yet because what? We got uh, the strike just ended. So also I created a whole library and a, and a whole uh, film studio down in Detroit where I shoot my own films and have distribution. So with that being said, if I don't want to work, I don't want to work. And when I want to work, I want to work. And also, my family owns the only black-owned, faith-based television network where we're in 100 million homes. So, don't think for a second that niggas just a from lottery ticket. I'm more. Well, I guess I gotta do it for the uh, 30 seconds. So you needed to run off your, <laughs> your laundry list of ways that you make money as if that was going to clean up the fact that your joke showed really... Like just there was there there was nothing smart about that joke. There was nothing good about that joke. It was lazy. It was a lazy read, and it just showcases your dislike for women, not believing victims, wanting to be able to abuse women, and them shut up about it. That's all y'all want. Y'all want everybody to take their abuse in silence. And I just kind of say to all the people that are like this, boy, fuck you. That's how I feel. Uh, there are people in the comments asking me what David Allen Greer did, and I just want people to pay attention to David Allen Greer in comments. You should just pay attention to um, what he says in the comments because he's an avid commenter on social media. He is. And at first, I used to like see some of the shit that he would, would put up and I would ignore it. You know what I'm saying? But after a while, you just start to realize, you know, it, first day should be on Zoom. He deleted, he deleted the first comment. There was, oh, no, 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 he didn't. Here it is. Mama said, not my baby. Hoes be gone. Yeah, that, that's real funny, even though she's talking about teenage girls. Nobody seems to have any awareness. This video really disturbed me. Let's go ahead. First restaurant he gonna take you to. What's the last restaurant your daddy took you to? Because you shouldn't be coming to him to be your daddy. That's not his role. It's a first date. 
I want y'all to bring that down to level three. Y'all weigh on 10 with this foolishness and want to embarrass somebody. My second question is, have you ever been anywhere? Where do you take yourself? Let me see your, your checkbook registry. Let me log into your bank account and see what you feed yourself on a regular basis. Are you talking about teenagers, ma'am? Are we talking about, are you asking a teenage girl to pull out her, her pocketbook? Her, her, no, no, I'm sorry, her checkbook. See, for me, I feel like the whole energy of this video, I understand what you mean. There are a lot of young girls out here that are disillusioned about what they're supposed to be able to get out of young men in relationships. Viewing everything as transactional. Y'all don't want to take that conversation any deeper because if you were to take that conversation any deeper, you would know that somebody taught the young girl that sex was transactional. Maybe it was the little boys around her. Maybe it was the little girls around her. Maybe it was the old niggas around her. Maybe it was the old women around her that taught her that her, her sex and her body and her time is transactional. Either way, that is neither here nor there. The main problem for me, you couldn't even brush your hair before you got your ass on the internet to talk about a child like this. Because she goes on to say a lot more. We're going to listen. We're going to listen first, and then, and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. Then, then I'm going to do it. Go ahead. Except for lunch or dinner. That's the next question I want you to answer. And then the third thing about this, uh, yeah, come on back over here, because I need you to understand what time it is. A real lady, a lady is going to be there for the purpose of what it's for. She's not looking for food because she's hungry that she can't afford so she can take it to go and get a doggy bag. Somebody took the food to go and got a doggy bag? Or are you creating that scenario? I, I need clarification. I'm going to wrap this up to go. Why? You ain't going to have food tomorrow? That's a poverty mindset. Ma'am, it may not be a poverty mindset. Nobody may be feeding her at home. This happens. So a first date, again, is to get to know the person, to hang out, have fun. Y'all should be laughing and talking. It don't need to be a steakhouse. We don't even know if you work a steak. You might just be worth a piece of bread. Again, a teenage girl, you are once again... You are once again, I feel like, feeding into the very mentality of why the young girls act this way. Why they think this way. You're telling her that because she wants steak for dinner on a date with your son, you don't even know if she's worthy of that. Her value may not be worthy of steak. Her value might only be worthy of bread. That's some shit as a grown-ass woman that you say to a kid? That's what you say to the young women? So ladies, young ladies, grow up. Get some maturity about yourself. Y'all buying titties, lashes, booties, and everything else. And you want somebody else to feed you. Say so the teenage girls are going to get surgery and wanting your son to feed them steak. That tells me teenage girls have money if they are going to get surgery. And that tells me they probably could afford their own steak dinner, but wanting your son to match energy. Girl, listen, she said she was like, what about your daddy? Where was the last place your daddy sent you as if whoever she's talking to is going to be somebody without a father? Because if she was talking to a young woman like me, <laughs> bitch, I'd have been like the last place my daddy took me was Root Chris. What's up? Crescent City Steakhouse. What's up? We, we actually frequently go to brunch at the Westin on Sundays. The fuck? <laughs> you talking to I just I just didn't like the energy I just didn't like the energy of it and personally I feel like it's okay for your son to say hey 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 ma'am I can't take you to a steakhouse <laughs> ma'am I can't take you to a steakhouse that's not in my budget this week I appreciate you though that's all you gotta do why you gotta get online with your mama screaming in her fucking robe with her edges all unsmoothed Screaming about what young girls deserve 
and how they should be enjoying their dates. Ma'am, how about you go on some first dates and let your son handle his own little romantic life? Because to me, how this should go is... Whatever date he's going on should not come out of your pocket. And you're angry. Like, whatever date he take the young girl on is going to come out of your pocket. And that's a problem. Because he should have a little job. If you don't have a little job on the side where you can make your little money so that you can take your little girlfriend on a nice little date, if you don't have that, then you ain't going on no motherfucking date. That's it. I'm not giving you no money to take no girl on no date. You already parenting backwards by, 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 by even being involved in this shit. Because that would be on him. You got your little job. Your little girlfriend won't go somewhere. You want to take her there. Let me know where and when and what's the transportation going to be like. And that's that on that. Ain't nobody about to be all, all involved in the text messages and where you think you deserve to go. And you should be just trying to get to know somebody. Motherfucker, I want to get to know somebody over food that I enjoy. What is the problem? <laughs> I get what you're saying, though. These are teenagers. Bitch, you should just want to go down to the rallies. You know what I'm saying? I understand what you mean. But I also feel like your energy, ma'am, is full of vitriol. And the way your son is standing there with that stupid fucking smirk on his face, not saying a word while you bark for him like a goddamn chihuahua. No young woman should want to put herself through whatever the fuck that is y'all got going on over there. <laughs> No young woman should want to deal with whatever weird-ass energy this nigga got with his mama where he can just stand there with a smile on his face as she barks on his behalf. Ma'am, get the dick juice off of your brain. Shout out to Princella. Find your body and put it to the side so you can have some, some, some food. That's not a man's responsibility. Now, once you dating a man and once he gets to know you, and y'all vibing, and he want to take you to a nice restaurant, guess what that means? You well deserving of that. He think enough about you to make a reservation. But some of you don't have reservations about your mouth. You talk bad, you disrespectful, you ghetto, you trifling, you don't have an income that substantiates what you want this man to do. Ma'am, are you talking to your friends, or are you talking to the teenagers? Who the fuck is she talking to? Are you talking to a grown woman? Because it sounds like you talking to a grown woman. Your son look like a teenager. Sound like you talking to a grown woman. Don't reserve being lazy. You full out lazy. You have no reservations on that. But you want, he, you want the men to make a reservation for a restaurant, but you don't reserve what's between your legs. You passing it out oh, like candy. Oh. Did that grown ass woman, did that grown ass woman just slut shame a child? I don't know who the little girl is, but I swear for God, I want her mama to beat your ass. You know, it's a lot of adult women, y'all think y'all right. It's a lot of adult women, y'all think y'all right about these things. So you feel like there's no need to have any real consideration for what really is going on with these young girls and that as an adult, your energy should not be on the same ignorant, young-minded, loud frequency that their minds are on. So for you to be talking about the sex that a child, that a teenager is having and who she's offering herself up to, you as a grown woman, you think that that is the tone you should take? Ma'am, you and your son are not deserving. You, you and your son are not deserving. He's not deserving of no young girl. I don't care what the issues are. And we can tell that you probably bark niggas away from you. Do you have a man to be, you know what I'm saying? Because you mad angry. She acting like her son is her man. Absolutely talking about this girl giving up her coochie now was your son trying to get said coochie but not wanting to give out steak dinners oh he wanted to fuck the little girl but he didn't want to give her a steak dinner that she was asking for so you want her to lower her standards you want her not to want what she want because your son can't afford to do that on the first date is that is that what i'm to understand here
How about how about we just say that's not a match and move on? Why do you have to dress the little girl down like this on the motherfucking internet? Uh, y'all, essentially, you're a grown woman talking about a child on the internet. Like, I don't know about y'all, but I feel like that's some that's some gutter snipe, ignorant, low grade, low vibrational, immature, gap ass shit. Rated E for everybody. Oh my, all righty, all right. When when your son knows that you've now done too much, when your son knows that you have now done too much and dl hughley and a lot of those other men in the comments and a lot of those pick me ass women thought that that shit was cute they thought that shit was cute they thought that, that that was a lesson that needed to be learned that these young girls shouldn't have high expectations especially if they can't get it for themselves bitch we live in a patriarchy when y'all like it's so confusing to me because what do y'all think the fairy tales and the in the in the you know find a husband to take care of you men are supposed to protect and provide like where do y'all how do y'all think young girls are supposed to translate that in their mind only if you deserve it because they have to tell you you're deserving of that if they don't tell you that you're deserving of protection and provision then you shouldn't be getting it oh yeah it's this young boy who can't even pay for a two hundred dollar dinner date. It's him and his angry fucking mama with her unsmooth edges and her robe that she needs to wash screaming on the internet about how these little girls is giving out their coochie to everybody and they lazy, but they want to go and, and have steak dinner. It, it seems to me that somebody taught the little girl that all she had to do was lay on her back and open her legs and your son was supposed to take care of her. That's what somebody told her. And y'all going to act like that's her fault. All right, I'm going to leave y'all alone. I'm going to leave y'all alone. I just want y'all to rise above. You know, I want y'all to be mature if you're going to be checking the children because you're not teaching them a better way to be. You're not teaching them a better way to be. Honestly, her anger was not cool. <laughs> it was not cool um, at all. And I'm listen, I'm not saying that every young boy should be able to provide a steak dinner. That's not what I said. What I said. Because can anybody repeat what I said? I said he should just be able to say, we're not compatible. I can't do that. That's okay. I can't. That's cool. Move on from there. That's it. And if the girl decided she wanted to try to embarrass him, why does he have to stand behind his mama as she slut shames a teenage girl? That, that seems appropriate to everybody? That seems appropriate? That's not appropriate. The little girl not knowing what she should expect at a young age is her being young. What the fuck are you grown hoes excuse? Listen, I'm, I'm, I don't know, you know, if we talk about futurism because I say unsmooth edges. Because every everybody can smooth their edges. This is this is. I mean, <laughs> everybody can smooth their edges, y'all. You just brushed them. Her hair was not brushed. You can tell she had just woken up, threw her robe on, and did this. And I just feel like before you get up here to scream out the back of your throat into the internet talking about teenage girls, maybe you should want to. I don't know. Put a little grease on that shit. I hope y'all weren't talking to me. I'm only just not catching the comments. All right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let me go ahead and press on. We have more to get to. Here we go. Let's talk. I just want y'all to know right now. I don't have time for y'all with this shit. I keep telling y'all they should have never made Krishan Blueface Stewie famous. And I stand on that. I also do not like Cam Newton. I don't. Like where you are and how you handle handle certain things is like, yo, like that's a beaut like look at that. Vibrant, you know, excited, turn, you feel me, fun, all that. Matter of fact, I seen a uh, a video what? of you uh playing football. Oh, yeah, you trying to throw the ball? Hey look, 
I yes. said, yo, this He's motherfucker fast. Huh? You were you an athlete in high school or athlete in high school? Then I went to college. Uh, I was training for the pro league LFL, and then I ended up making so much money and traveling. I said, fuck that. Mm. But I'm back to it. Could you see yourself really taking the what is it, the LFL, or uh, anything I touch for real? Honestly, I just have to put my mind to it. Mm. <laughs> like, let me ask you this though. Why are you doing all that? Because like, I'm really like, I'm trying to give. Like, you are like, mm. I, bro. This is the first time we've had this interaction. Okay. Yeah. A lot of it has been a lot of hype. Like, yo, I'm going on Funky Friday. I'm going on this and I'm going on that. But I'm like, I have, I owe a due diligence to myself. It's like, yo, like this person really is like cool, dope, and. I want to be patient with you to bring out that and that that be the narrative. Not, oh, my God, you heard what she said on that, like, blah, 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 and boom, boom, boom. Like, man, all that shit whack as hell. That shit ain't pee. Do you know J.J. Watts? J.J. Watt, the yeah. football player? Yeah, they, yeah, okay, they had this show called Ultimate Tag. I won the prize money out of all the athletes of the girls. It was $10,000, and I was only 19. So that was a lot. When I was a little kid. That's, that's, shit, that's, that's a lot of money. That's yeah, a lot. 34, hell. That's shit, 10 bands. 20 bands. 100 bands. Fuck it, man. That's not even <laughs> man, no, man, no, man. They say, talk about 10,000, bitch. 10,000 dropped up out my pocket right now. Shit, motherfucker. We're going to, everybody going to have to stop. You hear me? That ain't just no little candy money now. See what I'm saying? <laughs> I think. It's a lot of flirtation going on there. And there's another clip. Hold up. Let me let me find the other clip because the other clip, I wonder if Tasha posted it or somebody. Like where you are and how you handle it. Oh, shit. Hold up. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, no, I don't think Tasha posted the other clip. Okay. Hold up. Let me see. Hollywood Unlocked. You know, they post everything that Krishan and them do. Trust me, we're going to talk about that story that was just up on the screen. Um, Not Krishan gets upset after leaving her tooth at home. Oh, goodness. Oh, look at Stewie's cheeks. Must be paying for that advertisement. Okay, here we go. But I, don't, I don't really know. I just started talking to him. It was like... Huh? What's like talking? Like, like we just talking. We haven't fucked or nothing. Good. We pray. We, mm. we chill. Good. We cuddle. No way. <laughs> Y'all spoon? <laughs> at, at this particular point in time, like, we ask that all people um, who don't approve of this message, y'all stop watching this interview because uh, it's a little triggering. So, you dating somebody right now? No, I haven't on our first date. We were supposed to get on a date after this. Why Why would that be triggering? Are, are you trying to get in Creshawn's head and make her think you want to fuck her, sir? I'm so confused. She's just is giggling and teeth about to fly out of her mouth because she's so excited that this very rich, weird-looking-ass nigga is giving her a good attention. And everybody's in the comments like, oh, my God, this is what she needs. She needs masculine energy. This is how she's going to be a better person. She just needs a masculine man to just come and be what she needs. And that way she can be a better woman. Uh, Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here with that shit. I'm sorry, but I need y'all to wake the fuck up. Wake up. Wake up. Watch Jazzy told us on Sham Booty's podcast, she loves him so much, she has uncomfortable, painful anal sex with him, even though she does not like it. And he can cry on her shoulder, but she cries in the fucking shower because she doesn't want her negative emotions to affect him. That's what Cam Newton got going on over there. And y'all up here acting like this is Jeezy and Neil Long again. Oh my God. This is going to make me like them again. Fuck out of here. Now let's listen to the rest of this damn conversation. Oh. <clears throat> I'm going to go on a date when I go back to LA. Really? You all like really I just damn. Look. I mean, I like this boy I'm talking to. But I don't, I don't really know. 
I just started talking to him. What's like? Huh? What's like talking? Like, like we just talking. We having fun. There's another clip. There's another clip, y'all. There's another clip where they talk about her relationships and shit like that. Or, or her relationship with Blueface. And it was like he was talking to her like she was stupid. Like, you do you do know that, that this, this dude don't care about me. You do know who he is. You do know he's a rapper. You know how they are. Like, just trying to make her responsible for how Blueface treated her. And I just kind of feel like, no, no, I, 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 I don't agree. I'm sorry. I believe that they are, uh, they are similar. She's a crackhead. And he's the narcissistic pusher. <laughs> That's how I feel. Okay? So let's... Uh, I'm tired of them, though. I, I am. I want to say that. I'm tired uh, of them. Now, anybody... Anybody, hold up. Like the video, y'all. There are, like... I don't know how many people in here, but there are only 400 likes. I don't know how many people are in here at this moment, but I know there are only four... 400 likes, okay? That fucking energy is wasting. Ugh. Okay? All right, listen. Okay, listen. This nigga. So y'all know Meg the Stallion came out with her song, Cobra. Okay? And it's a good song. And in the song, she has one line about how you going to have, you know, a bitch sucking your dick in a place that I sleep. Meaning that party was getting some sloppy toppy from some girl in his bed where Meg sleeps when she is there. Okay. And that's what that's all she said. That's all she said. Party came out with a whole fucking song. Okay. And in it, this is what he said. Party really said, got lipo, then started posting gym pics, went on TV and lied to Gail King. Beautiful girl, but your soul is disgusting. But we're not going to deny. We're not, we're not going to deny. We're, we're not going to deny. <laughs> Hold up, I don't want your music playing on my shit. Okay, had me beefing with niggas you knew you was fucking. Oh, wow. What, what niggas was she fucking? Are you talking about Tory Lanez? Because nobody asked you to pick up a beef, but you should be beefing because he shot her, if that's who you were talking about. I don't know. I don't know, party, but it feels as if you decided to choose hell. That girl mentioned you slightly. Slightly. Scoach. Just scoach. Wasn't even that deep. Niggas cheat. It's not that bad. And you, you decide to choose violence. You decide to choose violence, y'all. Hold up. I'm pulling up these damn lyrics. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. After watching, after watching people drag your name and talk about you in unfavorable ways, in order to get attention, uh, clicks, I never thought you would do something like that to me. Oh, I'd like to apologize for, uh, no, no longer keeping up with your lies or supporting your habits to tell half truths. Oh, wow. And then he named the song, The Person. I hate this nigga. Oh my God. A bitch, a bitch can't mention you cheating on her. Without you, like, like, just straight up <laughs> going for her fucking jugular, my dude. This is so bitch made to me. You could have gave, you could have dragged her a tad bit. You ain't have to drag her like this. This is giving jealousy to me. Let me finish. Okay, hold up. Look, you talk shit about Kellen shit about Jayla and Darren. You talk shit about everybody except for the person in the mirror that's staring. You talk shit like you Keisha, then cry like you Karen. So she can't talk shit to her dude. Like she can't tell him how she really feeling because this is the type of shit he gonna do. He gonna put it in a fucking song and name names. 
fuck awards that you won, money you got, clothes that you wearing. A whole lot happened in these last two years. But this is the part that you sharing. I just wish you tell the whole truth when you was going through shit, how I hold you. It's going to be okay. That's what I told you. I was the realest nigga you was close to, and that's for real. The people that know you don't love you. The people that love you don't know you. Nobody loves her, my dude. Wow. Wow. I loved you out loud. I was vocal. Said you never seen that up. So that means you don't love her. Because you just said that people you know don't love you. That's what you just said. So nobody loves her. Okay. That sounds sad to me. That nobody loves the girl. Okay. I'm sorry. I loved you out loud. I was vocal. Said you never seen that up close. I said, come here, baby. Let me show you. You really could have been using it for clout, but we're going to leave it. <laughs> Sit down for a second, girl. You need to hear this. Be for real. You ain't even realistic. Got lipo, then you started posting gym pics. The things that you're doing is sadistic. I mean, she said in her song, okay, this pussy is depressed. I'm about to stress him. She did say that, y'all. Seems like she stressed the nigga out. Spent four hours doing glam, not a blemish. But your foundation is off. You need to fix it. Why would you say that? That sound like that sound like you fucking with that girl's self-esteem. Clean up your spirit and not just your image. I thought that's what you was doing with your downtime. When the snake shed its skin, it's only it only changed on the outside. You got emotional hurdles. Man, the work you need is internal. And she couldn't write about what happened in y'all relationship. She ain't really like going on you like that. This is extra, sir. You naming names. When love goes bad, can't believe it. Archive pics because you can't delete it. Damn, see me with Jada Kingdom and then you went Jada Pinkett. Saw you pop out, wish you the best. You see me pop out, start gripping your chest. Damn, thought you was on an island healing. I guess the newer album need a villain. Brand new way for you to be a victim. And, what? Wow. And you did all this on my daughter's birthday. What? What does that have to do? Oh, girl, you consistent. <laughs> you consistent. Shit, I got to love you from a distance. Same nigga that you did all the tags for the beats. You let that nigga tag. Wait, tag, let him beat. Oh, so she's saying she fucked up. He's saying she fucked up producer. Oh, slut shaming. We love that. You let me give um dap when we meet. Even that I kept discreet. I asked you to your face, did you fuck them niggas? And you swore on your mother. I knew from then I couldn't trust her. More lies from the lips of a lover. Same lips that I got tatted on my shoulder. Even then, I kept my composure. I was supposed to. This the girl that I'm trying to propose to. As Greg Una, I had picked out a Oh, I hate you. I picked the ring out, niggas. Oh, my God. Can y'all can y'all pick from a new... Can y'all pick from a new controlling, try to make a bitch feel bad book? Because y'all all do this. I picked out a ring. I was going to, nigga, it don't matter. Almost don't count. Ask Brandy about it. Okay? Then you lied to my face, went on TV, and then lied to Gail King. I found out with the rest of the world, God, I treated you like a queen. Whole time, I'm a clown in your circus. I tried to pull you up out the mud. Here you are trying to drown me on purpose. You know the devil was a serpent for some streams and views, girl. I hope it was worth it. Yes, it wasn't just for streams and views. It was a great song. <laughs> it's worth it. It's worth it, Meg. Oh, my God. Did he have to do all of that, y'all? All of that? He had to do all of that? Y'all, he didn't have to do all of that. That was a lot, y'all. I feel like that was a little bit too much for, for all that she said, y'all. The lady didn't even say all of that. Damn. You ain't never really love that lady if you're going to go at her neck like that in a song. Like, damn. Yikes. Damn. <laughs> Man, Meg, you got you to gotta pick better next time, honey. You got to pick better, honey. You got to, you got to, you got to, you know, you got to be on. Oh, girl, I, I feel like you just need to be by yourself, okay? Just be by yourself. Don't, don't get no more relationships, no more public relationships for a while, Brian. Don't tell nobody nothing. Don't talk about it. Just let it be what it's going to be, girl. Okay? Because this is just re, re damn ridiculous. And I can understand him feeling a way about the line in the song. But to me, it was obvious y'all was already broke up by the time she decided to write the song. 
And she ain't even go in on you that bad. You went in like, oh my God. And then mixing in all of the stuff with the case. Y'all, I hate that. I hate that for her. I hate that for her. Nobody, nobody gotta be like a perfect person, y'all. But as a like a person in a relationship, like he did a he did a lot. Like he did a lot. My God. Jesus, that was some bitch ass shit. <laughs> that was some bitch ass shit. If I have, I am shocked and appalled, Party Fontaine. Oh man, till you do right by me, everything you even think about gonna fail. Until you do right by me, that shit was not cool. That shit was not cool. All right, y'all. So let's move on. Let's move on to Tamar. Let's move on to Tamar and Tommy. Now, I don't know why Tommy Lee decided to get involved with whatever the fuck was going on with uh, Tamar and Creshawn, but it was almost like she was defending Creshawn, I guess. And her and Tamar went back and forth. Oh, snap. Tommy Lee hangs out with Tamar's ex, Jeremy Robinson, following online fight. And she was like, last, night game, last night's game was all over the place. And this is, you know, how close she is to him. <laughs> All that touching and shit, girl, you so performative, you so fucking fake, you so desperate, you so extra for no reason. In real life, you so irrelevant. Like, I'm sorry, y'all, but at this point, for Tommy to be famous for the shit she's famous for, it's just real whack. Like, it's irrelevant. Like, girl, what? I just wonder, would this one not all this rest but if she wasn't there would this one have been this viral remember the question when you respond so once again i guess tommy trying to make it seem like tamar needed creshawn in order for what to her to sell out shows bitch she's already selling out shows tamar doesn't need creshawn for clout you idiot now she's thirsty for attention and might have wanted you know the, the situation to be fun but no i don't think she needs to lie about Krishan punching James in order to get clout. What the fuck are you talking about? Via Tamar. Hold up, hold up. Let, 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 let's see. So now y'all want me to address out of work reality stars. Never. Me and my Muppet employed ass will keep you on the list if I need a non-fighting cokehead for, oh, for 2,500 an episode for one of these shows of mine I'm casting for. Oh my God. We not the same. Go sell some ass for your next hit. I'm finna come with my next hit. Oh my God. Gotta address me for it to hit Muppet. What? Nothing as bitch say apply to me so I don't be moved at all. I can't even ask a question without hoes getting in a, in a frenzy. Don't flatter yourself, mama. So glad I know that. Girl, what are you talking? And before someone takes my phone, if you want cocaine and your name starts with a T and you never even sold out a bag of blow pops, stay silent. God bless y'all. Let me and my team heal from this trauma in peace. Yes, y'all. This read that Tamar gave was A1. And so because you could not read her back, you decided to go and sit next to her ex real, real comfortable like. For real, this comment right here, Tamar ate Tommy up and she knew it. So went back to the lab and pulled out the big guns. On the flip side, he's mad corny for participating and he knows exactly what's going on. I concur with that comment. <laughs> Vicky Irvin, I agree with you. Okay, this is just stupid. This is just stupid. Like, girl, I guess you made the blogs today. All right, let's move on. So y'all know Diddy and Cassie have reached a settlement. Okay, hold up. Did y'all like the video? Before we get into it, like the video. Anywhere you go, anywhere you go, give it up. Anywhere you said, anywhere you said, anywhere.
before we really get back into this, I want to go ahead and, and thank Amber, Ash, and Miko for becoming members and being a member for four months. She most definitely sees her son as her man. Another scrappy in the making, shaking my head. It's so sad. It's so sad. It's so sad. Okay. I'm dying. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into let's get into this uh ridiculousness. Okay. <clears throat> Cassie and Diddy have agreed to quietly handle this lawsuit she filed Thursday, accusing him of heinous things from aring and sex trafficking her and of brutally beating her during the personal relationship. Y'all. The fact that they settled this shit so quickly is insane to me. And that should let y'all know it's true. I don't know if there was anybody out there that didn't believe Cassie. Because I feel like the writing has been on the wall for a very long time when it comes to Puff Daddy. To P. Diddy. To Brother Love. Okay? Um, the energy is the energy. At the end of the day, if you don't see it, girl, it's not my fault. But he has been giving uh, baby black Hugh Hefner for the longest. Energy sucking ass. Using young women, just vampire sucking, vampire sucking. And everybody's like, well, you know, you shouldn't make those types of sacrifices for, for money and fame, you know, coming from people that work jobs they hate so that they can take care of themselves. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, so this is some of the shit that was in the court filing. Miss Ventura was evenly instructed to use websites. I'm sorry, eventually, I'm sorry. Ms. Ventura was eventually instructed to use websites and escort services to find male sex workers to participate in the F-offs. Mr. Combs told Ms. Ventura to search for large black penises on the website. Some, okay, sometimes Mr. Combs would play, I'm sorry, pay <laughs> to fly male sex workers to his location, including to multiple cities in the United States as well as abroad. He's required Miss Ventura and his staff to help him make these arrangements. Mr. Combs' assistance would help him to set up the FOs, including uh, by setting up the hotel suites with Baby Oil and Astro Glide. Mr. Combs always supplied Miss Ventura and the sex worker with copious amounts of drugs before and during the FOs. Miss Ventura was given ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol in excessive amounts during F-offs, which allow her to disassociate during these horrific encounters. And also, I heard that ketamine helps with the anal. Just saying. That's what I heard. That's what I heard. I don't know. I've never, but I'm just saying. Um, to let you know what might have been going on. It became commonplace to get IV fluids in the days after an f off to recover from the excessive substances pushed upon her. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ventura was required to dress up in lingerie for an F off and Mr. Combs insisted she wear white nail polish to contrast her nails with the skin of the black men he hired to have sex with her. During the F off, Mr. Combs would instruct Ms. Ventura to pour excessive amounts of oil on herself. Mr. Combs would then instruct Ms. Ventura and the sex workers to speak to each other and then would specifically tell Ms. Ventura where to touch the sex workers because he wants to do it, but he doesn't want to be gay. Mr. Combs would say things like grab that big black D and ask her, how does it feel? As he directed her to perform for him. Oh, wow. And there's so much more in the court filings. I think they're like 30 some odd pages. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, shout out to Erica De Niro. Pay the lady. And he decided to, he decided to, um, but there are some people that are upset that they've decided to, uh, to, you know, go ahead and, um, settle the case. Danity Kane and them. Okay. Because they all supported her. And I feel like there's no need to not support her because she settled. She still came out and told the truth. The settling means that now we know that he's doing this shit as far as I'm concerned, but apparently you know, now the girls are feeling, you know, money, no accountability every time. Welcome to another chapter of the system is well in place. And this may not even be shade at Cassie. Um, it just may be the, the real, you know, the real, the realistic situation that we're in. 
And when I say that, I mean, if anybody has ever watched a good episode of SVU, you will realize how hard it is to prove sexual assault, especially sexual assault where a person will be able to say, you were my girlfriend. You wanted to do these things. You took the drugs. I didn't make you do any of this, even though we know that, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm hearing that the settlement might have been closer to 50 million, but I don't know if I believe that. And the only reason I'm saying I don't know if I believe that is because Diddy is, you know, suspect with the ends these days. Now, I know he still has a lot of money, but does he have 50 million in, in cash or, you know, like what's the situation for real, for real? You know what I'm saying? And honestly, she could have got way more. That's another thing. 12 years of, of, of all of that type of damage. And I feel like she had video. She had pictures. She had text messages. She had the evidence that could have been used to actually take this to trial. But the argument would still then be, you still agreed to these things as my girlfriend. And that's, that's what makes it harder to fight when you take something like this to trial. But if I have paid attention to time as soon as stuff like this starts to come out even this settlement is going to cause like a, a a domino effect a domino effect will take place and it won't just be her it'll be other people and those might be uh, uh you know cases that are criminal and that can be actually taken to trial or it'll be somebody recent who knows who knows but it can also ruin his business, y'all. The business of entertainment is truly based off of relationships. And if you become too much of a liability for the other people around you, they will cast your ass out just like they do everybody else. Child, a lot of people settled. A lot of people settled. And, you know, I know y'all like to think that MJ was, you know, y'all like to think he didn't do that shit. Mm -hmm. Keep, 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 keep thinking that. Keep thinking that. You just let me know when you're going to let a 35-year-old man babysit your fucking kids. Let, let me know when. Um, and, and then we can have this conversation. If you can tell, if you could point out the 35-year-old man with a baby voice that you're going to let watch your motherfucking kids, <laughs> Then we can have a conversation about MJ taking all of them fucking settlements from all them white kids. Yeah. But this shit was fast. This shit was quick. This shit was fast. I wasn't expecting it. I'm not even going to front on y'all. I was not expecting it. But I personally feel like when you put a person through that type of turmoil, if they just want their money so that they can go and live in peace, that's their prerogative. She did her part when she said when she filed this lawsuit and it went public, that was her part. She let y'all know what was hood. She let y'all know what was going on. She got what she needed. And now she can go and enjoy the rest of her fucking life and try to heal from everything that's taking place. At the end of the day, it don't mean you could sign an NDA all you want to. Them court documents are already out. <laughs> Though these court documents with everything she, she said happened to her are already there. His settlement tells me that the shit in the court documents is true. So none of, none of that shit that, you know, that, that none of that matters. To me, this was a loss for him. This was a loss for him. But this tells me he didn't have the money to litigate it. That's what this tells me. This tells me he may not have had the money to continue uh, uh, fighting so many legal battles, especially one with this much damage and evidence, which I do believe this girl had evidence. Okay. But yeah, y'all, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I ain't got nothing else to say. You can agree to disagree. Okay. Hold up y'all before we go. Nene, sis, you can have him. Trust me. It's not what you think. The bedroom sex is horrible. He's dumb, broke, a loser, a cheater, a liar, and a narcissist. Run while you can. Ma'am, Nene Leaks, let me talk to you, baby. Because this don't make no fucking sense. You got this type of mess going on in your life with that African you was fucking? You still dealing with him in some type of way that some, you got to tell some woman she can have him? Girl, put a name on it. Get on Instagram Live and give us the fucking details. Stop shooting subliminals in your stories and, and, and profit off of this pain that you're going through, bitch. What's going on? 
Get your ass on YouTube. And, and, and girl, let me tell y'all what's going on. Sit there with your wine and then tell us how this nigga ain't shit. But please stop getting your ass on Instagram. Trying to, trying to, trying to spoon feed us bullshit about this man we told you about. I know she ain't spell liar right. I ain't got time for it. We all know it's been a long time since she been in school or had to do spell check. Lastly, y'all, I know I'm a little bit all over the place. Excuse me for that, but I forgot about this, but I do want to talk about it. Because there's always a male identified bitch in the bunch. There's always one. God damn you, Paula J. Parker. She gets her ass on Twitter and says these very careless tweets. I'm sorry, but I don't get it. I used to be 19 and I was in the industry and I was quite capable of saying no. Just because you were never put in a situation where somebody forced themselves on you or or love bombed you and made you feel like being in a relationship with them was a good idea. Just because that never happened to you, what does that mean? Your, your your experience in life is not the only one. You do know that there are other experiences and filters and, ex, you know, just other people, right? You do know that there are other people that see things a different way because they've had different experiences than you. So the filter that they look through life at is different from yours. You're not Cassie. The fuck? Let's start off there. I'm trying so hard to see the victim here. The forcing to have sex with prostitutes, we don't, we don't feel... We don't feel there's a victim in that. I'm trying so hard to see here uh, to see the victim here, but do sex slaves usually get to pick their sex partners in five star hotels? So all you care about is the fact that it's five star hotels. She may pick the man, but at the end of the day, he's telling her you have to pick a nigga to fuck. Help, ma'am. Ma'am. You do recognize that there, that there's not <laughs> there's not a lot of room in there, okay? It, it's not saying, do you want to have a threesome with a guy? It's not saying that. It's saying, here, here's a website. Pick one of these niggas with a big dick. You gonna call somebody a sex slave and then what? Act like they have a, a say so in the sex slavery, girl? Oh, oh, oh. It's like y'all never, y'all, y'all have never heard the concept of pimps up, hoes down. Like y'all have never seen people break young women into, you know, I don't have anybody else in my life. So you're all that I have and I'll do whatever you want me to do. Even if you want me to fuck other men, y'all have never seen that type of pimp hole situation take place and how sad it is because the women literally are responding to the men like they're a drug addict. And then you add drugs to the mix and then they're young. Like Cassie was 19 when she got with 37 year old fucking Diddy. I keep telling y'all every situation ain't like this, but a lot of the times it is y'all when girls are 19 years old and niggas are 37, the 19 year olds think they know better. Like Carisha, Carisha thinks she knows better. She thinks she's the bottom bitch over there. She thinks she the bottom bitch until she realized that all of the bitches get treated the same. Even the bottom bitch at some point is going to be humiliated. It's going to be denigrated. It's going to be disrespected. It's going to be told to do something she don't want to do. And she going to do it any fucking way. Carisha, you go back and forth between being depressed and happy and shopping. Depressed, happy, shopping. Seems like you might be being worked into the situation thinking you the bottom bitch. Because the bottom bitch is gone. Her name was Cassie. I think y'all just don't like him, but he didn't invent the game. He just plays it. So because he did not come up with the pimp game, him using it to control a young girl makes it okay. But there's no, <laughs> you don't feel that way about her. She's, she's the young girl that gets pulled into this situation and you don't feel like that about her though. You don't feel like, oh, she didn't invent this whole game. She was just pulled into it by a grown man. You don't feel that way. Okay. Uh, hubby thinks I don't like her, but that's not true. That's to what? Make us think that you're not male identified and thirsty for dick. Hubby doesn't. <laughs> Girl, is that the same husband you was living in a motel with? Never mind. I don't like chicks that take the easy route and get mad when it doesn't pan out. 
didn't you not take the easy route and it still didn't pan out? You see how these things don't really matter and you can sit on a perch from a fucking motel room all you want to? Ain't that some shit? You mad because during her abuse, she got to experience a lavish lifestyle that you've been working all your career for and still haven't gotten. So on some level, you're resentful. So that's why you can't look at this empathetically because she's been able to stay in five-star hotels being assaulted. Meanwhile, you're you're happy unassaulted in Motel 6 with your, with your children and your husband. Okay, girl. Okay. Um... She says, I don't like chicks that take the easy route and get mad when it doesn't pan out. God bless the child who's got his own. I love when y'all throw the Lord in it after y'all finish being evil old bitches. But yes, I believe she deserves compensation. It was like a marriage and she became accustomed to the lifestyle. Ma'am, that lady is already married. That is not what this is about. She's already married. That is not what this is about. And after all the stuff she wrote, she did. I don't think he was ever really going to marry her. Ew. And then you're laughing about it. Wow. He wasn't going to marry her because he made her do disgusting shit. And you're turning your nose up. Ew. Girl, I would say the same thing about you sleeping on beds at the Motel 6. Oh, that's right. I forgot y'all get caught up in beautiful. Oh, we're hating even more. You're hating on her looks. You see a pretty little fawn and think Bambi instead of baby demon. Where's the baby demon in being forced? Girl, did you read that thing? <laughs> it sounds like something out of a penny dreadful. I'm tired of women making poor choices that affect us. Girl, how the fuck does this affect you? How does this affect you? Is it in your mind that because women uh, uh, have sex that men are going to feel like all women are going to do that. They're so confused. They couldn't possibly understand that every woman isn't the same. And so if one girl is going to do this, then they're just going to think that every girl is going to do it because they're fucking retarded, right? Girl, shut up. Setting a president that leaves us vulnerable. We're already vulnerable because we're prey. Even if there were no holes in the world, there will still be men taking advantage of women, even if there were no holes. I don't know if y'all know that. 10 years from now, some dude says your lack of affection gave him PTSD. Every absent dad isn't by choice. Girl, what are we talking about? There are no kids involved in this scenario. Are you trying to say that those two things are the same? Maybe I'm jaded because I'm here. I live it and see it every day. The pretty ones with little talent take what they want while the rest of us depend on God. Well, maybe you need to, to work that out. <laughs> maybe you need to work that out instead of being a callous, heartless, old, bitter bitch because you didn't get where you feel like you should have been. To me, that sounds like an energy thing. That sounds like something you should be able to work out for yourself. The Bible says bribery is okay in business. Give a little to get ahead. So she did. He should have took the deal. <sighs> Y'all. This is so sad to me. It's so sad to me. It's so sad. The hate is real. The jealousy is real. Um, no grace for women. Like, just no grace at all. No grace at all. Grown-ass men forcing uh, forcing young women's hands and shit. Y'all are all good with that. <laughs> Y'all weird as fuck. She weird as fuck. I, I just can't. I just can't. Paula J, if we loved you as an actress, bitch, you know, it, it makes me want to go and re-watch re Tales from the Crypt. Do y'all remember how she got her ass beat in Tales from the Crypt? I'm going to leave it alone. Y'all depend on the Lord, huh? You depend on the Lord? Is that is that what we're to believe? You should have went and did theater if that's the mindset she was going to have. Fuck you trying to be an actress for in weird-ass Hollywood all these years if this the energy. Ma'am, go do theater. I just can't. I just can't. All right, y'all. I'm done now. <laughs> that. I, I'm I'm done now. Superhead warned every woman after her, just like Riri warned every woman after. And y'all still don't listen. And nobody listens. 
nobody listening. Well, I guess they'll have to go through it on their own, child. If you want to learn these lessons, go ahead. Let's see how that came full <laughs> by David Allen Greer. See how that came full circle? Oh, shit. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Oh, my God. Anyway, y'all, I just wanted to come to y'all for a little quick one, too. I hope y'all enjoy. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You should become a member because that's where these videos normally reside, along with Love and Marriage Huntsville and Bell Collective um, of my TV show reviews. So, you know, hope y'all do that. Um, hold up. I see a super chat. Hold up. Let me look. 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 Ooh. Ooh. Let me look. Oh, oh, thank you, Lily Sweet, for the super chat. Both Paula and Puffy are both projecting, in my opinion. And in Paula's case, it's a weird mix of religion and self-loathing. Really sad. Can't, stay, can't stand the male identified. Girl, you read down in this comment. It's called double talk. It is demonic. Oh, Lord. Child, at 37, did she know not to blow up cars and kick people in the face? Because that's what he did. He blew up Kid Cuddy car. He blew up Kid Cuddy car, allegedly. <laughs> Fought J. Cole in a club. He was doing a lot, y'all. He was doing a lot. I haven't read the whole thing yet because it's a lot and I ain't had time just yet. But I'll probably, uh, I might come to my members like with the whole, with the whole situation, the whole read down of it. Okay. But anyway, um, I love you guys. Yes, yes, we talked about how he dangled a nigga off a balcony like he was Big Red. What about my books? What about my books? My office hours are from. My office hours are from. Nine. Nine. Yeah, I might, have to, I might have to come to y'all on a little late night read. For that one. We'll do that. We'll do that, members. Okay? So become a member if you want to see me read down the whole thing. <laughs> All right. I love you guys. I hope y'all have a good rest of y'all day. I hope y'all enjoy y'all weekend. I hope y'all enjoy my live because I enjoy y'all. And I'm going to see y'all. I'm going to see y'all. Okay? Bye. Bye. Thank you, Miss Toya. All right, y'all. Bye.